today we're putting up our onions and I just wanted to show you the steps of how we put up these onions in the freezer. So we picked them, we had a video of that, and we let them kind of dry out for a couple days. Um, and now we're peeling off the couple top layers till you get to a good layer like that. And now some of these have gone bad on us. So if you push on them like this and if they feel a little soft, then they're probably really bad. But sometimes it's just a couple top layers that are soft like this one. So I can feel when I press on it, the middle part of the onion is still good. So I'm just going to peel off the bad parts. Now, if I was to push on that though and the whole thing was soft and squishy, that would mean the whole onion was bad. So we would not want to cut that up. So, so we do that. And um, I'll just do one more here, and then I'll show you what the next step is. And doing onion, or getting putting onions away the way that we're doing them, has quite a few steps. Kind of like the layers of an onion, right? There's a lot of layers to an onion. Like I said, I mean, you would think, I mean, you have this very outside layer. Actually, a couple of these brown layers that are outside. And then you have, you know, a couple even more before you even get to the good part of the onion. So you end up peeling back quite a few layers, but yet yeah. you're still left with a really good onion. So it's kind of amazing how many layers an onion has. And then of course when you use an onion, when you cut it and you look inside, you see how many more layers are in there. So onions, and, and this has a lot of steps just like an onion. But there's a lot of other things that have a lot of steps too. Things like that. So, <coughs> so, after that, then we cut the tops off, the bottom and the top. Off like so. Okay, and then you can peel off a little bit more here. Okay, and then we put it in a bowl of water. So we already have some in this bowl. This just keeps them clean, right? Get, get them clean. So just do like this. A few. So, and now once we've once we've done do this in front of the, in the, into the freezer. And we use them, you know, for a lot of different things. I mean, it's so nice to have them already chopped up for when you need to cook, when you're going to cook, or you're going to make something, and you want to use chopped onions. And the nice thing is when you freeze the onions, um, you know, they're pretty easy to thaw out or to separate if you just want to use a little bit of it. They don't really freeze too solid like a big rock, you know. So, that's why onions, onions are nice that way. So, then... So now, I, I'm going to stop doing that and I'll show you what the next step is. So then, you have them out of the bowl, and then you're just going to make them. We have this chopper we got at the state fair a long time ago. And I mean a long time ago. And every year we go to the state fair, we try to buy another one. So we have quite a few of these things. And right here is the blade that chops the onion. Or any vegetable. We use it for cabbage, carrots. Uh, you know, really anything. And also, this chopper came with a lot of different attachments, which is really cool. And then, so we do french fries with this. It's like a french fry chopper. And so, the, it comes with a french fry chopper, so we do it with with our potatoes. Um, and also, it comes with a whole bunch of other attachments that we don't really use because we don't need to. But you can do a lot with this chopper. And so, this is the lid. So, this little bit goes... Um, <coughs> on this opening, this part right here comes in this hole right here where that blade is. And you go like this, and then you have to kind of get it going. So I pull it. Sometimes it's hard if you have a lot of stuff in there. So you have to kind of go like this. And then when you get to go, and it goes fast. So there you go. Now, all those onions, or what, that was easily chopped them. 
I mean, so it doesn't take that long to chop a good amount of onions with this cool chopper. So we are really, we love this chopper so much. And then we put them in a the bag. Now I don't have any freezer bags tonight. So, oh look, I do have a, some freezer bags left over. So we'll put them in the freezer bag. And like I said, I fill up the freezer bag pretty good. And then I just break off the amounts I want as we cook with them. Or we just you know, can use them all if you're going to make a big thing. So, um, yeah. So that, so it's really simple. I mean, there's kind of a lot of steps to it. But once you get going, I mean, it doesn't take too long to do that whole bucket of onions tonight that we're going to do. So um, it's not really too bad. So, and really, I mean, if you can get a chopper or something similar to this, because like I said, we got this at our state fair. So you may not be able to get the same exact one, but... Any type of chopper should work for onions. And also, they probably have even electric ones that you might get even. So you don't have to spin it with your hand, you know. So, but, um, so now we're going to do some more. And also what I wanted to tell, tell you guys tonight was about um, on Sunday what happened to us at church. Hold on one second. Okay, I'm back. Okay, so I wanted to tell you about Sunday. Something amazing happened to us at church. So, you know, God talks to people in lots of different ways, right? Sometimes he talks to people as they read the Bible. Sometimes he talks to people in prayer. Or sometimes he talks to people, you know, when they're doing certain things, you know. Uh, out out in nature, you know, working, doing whatever they may be doing. But also some way, uh, God talks to me in a lot of different ways. But one way he talks to me in a few different times. And also, I don't know, this is going to get stuck. Hold on. Um, on Sunday, he talked to me through the church sermon, right? So what, how that would look like would be like, you know, if you are been praying about something or you've been struggling with something and then you know you have that on your heart in your mind and then when you go to church and you hear the sermon it's exactly the answer to your prayers or your question or your struggle that you have been going through and that is definitely an assurance God is talking to you and, you know, there's probably other people, maybe other people that are struggling with the same thing in that church. Because God knows everything. So, <coughs> what happened was on Sunday when we went to church, I had been having some, you know, some, a little bit of struggles and stuff that I had been dealing with. And some things that I thought I had worked out, but really wasn't worked out like I thought. And so, God really talked to me on Sunday. It was just amazing. It made it really opened my heart he clicked he cleansed my heart for me that sunday which i had thought was already cleansed but really there had been a part of me inside deep inside my heart that he had been showing me up about for four weeks up until on sunday that um was i was trying to hide and trying to not think was a problem or things like that or a struggle i was trying to pretend like it wasn't a struggle but it really was so on Sunday, he totally opened it up. He totally cleansed my heart. He totally told me, listen, you don't need this anymore. You don't need to, to act like this. It's going to be okay. So then I felt so much better. I felt just so much lighthearted. I mean, me and my husband, we talked about it. We both felt just so lighthearted, so like a weight was lifted off of us. And then what happened was two people at our church that day after the service um, had given us one person we didn't really talk to a lot, but talked to my husband about something, and then somebody else at the end that we found to, that was one of our friends had talked to us. But um, both of them had given us compliments. Now you think that that would be like not a big deal, right? I mean, compliments. But well, the one person gave us a compliment of something, and this person didn't even know us, and so it was a really great compliment that assured us that he was always with us and that he didn't leave us 
you know, he was telling us he was, you know, it's all right, even though what he had to talk to me about, you know, what he had talked to me about and what he had cleansed from my heart, um, you know, he wanted to reassure me that it was still okay and that <clears throat> he was still with me like he always will be. So that really made me, I mean, this is not the only time that God has assured me of using other people. So, you know, one time he had assured me using one of our neighbors. Um, and so there's so many times that that has happened. And so I just wanted to share my testimony, my latest testimony from Sunday, <clears throat> which would have just been yesterday, of how great God is and how much he loves us and how he always knows everything, even though you cannot hide anything from him. So it's just kind of like an onion too. Like your heart could be the onion, right? So you have something deep, 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 deep in there. But God, he knows how to peel away the layers. You don't have to tell him. And even though you might think you're not feeling that or you're trying to hide it away, God, you can't hide it from God, right? And he will fix it. He will fix it. There's no doubt. So he's just wonderful. He's just a loving God, gracious, caring, forgiving. You know, I repented of those, my little issue that I was having, my feelings that I was trying to hide. I was able to repent again, even though I had repented of that before, but, you know, I was still ho ho holding on to it. I was still harboring those feelings, which was not a good thing. It was, you know, they were hurt feelings. And so ho harboring hurt feelings is not, is not from God. I mean, he doesn't, hurt feelings isn't from him, right? So you wouldn't want to harbor any type of bad, not good feelings because those are not coming from God. So you just want to have God stuff in your heart. So it's, he's amazing. Always he is, but I love when he reassures me throughout my life with different ways. So, I hope that he can reassure you if you need it, which I know he can if you just ask and you're open to him. If you open your heart to him, he will do wonders for you. And I hope that he does. And I hope, too, that I help you. And I can help answer any questions and I can be a light to your life with what we do in our life and what we talk about here. So, thanks for watching our videos and subscribe and like it if you like it. That would be a blessing for us and we're very gracious for those people who do that. And check back to see what happens with our gardens next time. Bye!